Hi folks, Double Hunter here, with, sit and have a laugh with Pat again. I got a couple of funny stories here that's happened to me over the years, and uh, I hope you enjoy them. When I had my shrimp boat and all, I was out on that water at night. You have never seen stars just look so brilliant as they do at night, and how many they are. It's, it's unreal. Well, I've always been a sky watcher. I, I've loved watching the stars and everything. Well, me and a friend of mine, we were big bow hunters. And we'd always take our vacation in October during bow season. And we'd take a week off from Chevron and we'd go up camping on some hunting land we had leased. And we'd bow hunt for that week. Well, always every year, his, his anniversary was right in the middle of when we was on that week vacation. But he didn't live at about 15 miles from where we was hunting. So he'd go home, spend a night, and come back the next day, which was no big thing. Well, he had a little red bone puppy, well, oh, maybe six months old. That, we're trying to train for trailing blood, you know, try to find wounded deer because sometimes doing bow hunting, you know, you got to track them down. They don't put right down on the ground like they do with a gun, you know. Well, I was sitting there that night partaking of a good old cold old Milwaukee. I just got through eating supper. Little dog laying down right alongside of me. I was sitting in the chair there. Yeah. It was on an old woods road. And all of a sudden, about 100 yards away, I seen the top one of them little pine trees that's about 25, 30 foot high. Top that pine tree lit up. I said, what in the world? Then it went out. I said, what in the world's going on? Well, but a few minutes later, top of that pine tree lit up again. That time, little dog with the ground hair raised up on his back. And I'm looking at it, I said, oh, I know it. That's Ray decided he's going to come back up here tonight. And he's trying to pull a trick on me. So I turn and look behind me. I didn't see nobody. The light went out. Well, I've always said, and I probably would, if I was somewhere in a UFO land, I would probably walk up to it because I think anybody that's intelligent enough to build spacecraft and like that, they're not going to come here to harm us, I don't think. So I don't think I'd be scared of it. Anyway, that tree lit up again. And I said, by God, I'm picked to find out what that is. Well, the hatchet was sitting right there on the table so I've been splitting up some wood to make a fire. So I got the hatch and, and the dog, and we started walking toward that tree. It was lit up. And I got about halfway there, and the light went out again. I got to kind of think, you know, and that dog, that dog's having fits. I mean, that dog is right between my legs. So I turned around and walking back toward the camp. And about that time, the light on the spotlight come on back behind me on a, on a, on a stump. He must have had a short and a switch. It was coming on off. That's what was lighting the top of that pine tree up. I almost got scared. I didn't, but I was close to it, but I had my hatchet with me. So I, I, that was pretty funny. I told Ray about it when he got back. He laughed his fool head off. I thought it was the funniest thing ever happened to me. Right, let me see what I want to talk about now. Daddy used to used to tell a lot of tales. and uh, He was talking back, back during the time when he he was in a CB camp. Uh, back during the Depression, you know, there wasn't many jobs on. They would send men off government with to do things. And, and Pam, he was a pole climber. He was putting power through the mountains there in Tennessee. He said, he way, way back up in there by himself. And uh, he was sitting down taking a little break. And he said, this old man come walking out of the woods, had a double barrel shotgun. And had a jug. He walked up to Dad. He says, uh, "What you doing?" He said, "Well, putting power through these mountains for you people." Well, they didn't want. It. They didn't want it, but they were going to get it anyway. So anyway, he says, uh, "Look, he says, uh, I want you to take a drink of the shine." There's no thanks. I, I don't really care that much for moonshine. He says, "Well," and he lowered a gun at my daddy. He said, "I said take a drink." Well, daddy. Took the bodies, I pulled the cork out, and it took me a good slug. Put it down, old man said, How was he? he said, Oh, that was awful. He said, Well, hold a gun on me while I take a drink. I thought that was pretty doggone funny, you know. Daddy had, daddy had some good jokes, you know. The other time, sitting on the porch, we, we built him a house after they took our land away from us on Clay Point and Bluxdale. We got lumber out of a 101 year old house and built a place back on Bob Pultes and Pascal's Chan. It's about 18 foot off the ground. They had the front porch crossed it. 
And he'd be out there every day, drink coffee, and a lot of his old friends would show up and sit down out there on the porch and just talk about the old times, you know. And they'd sit there talking about this, talking about that. And, oh, boy, that was the good old times. By that time, Daniel, he said, you know, he said, we crazy as hell. This is the good old time. You remember you had to get out there in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, go to the outhouse with ice on the ground. You remember many time you went to build a hungry belly during the Depression and all. And we sit there saying, this is the good old, that was the good old times. He said, this is the good old times. I had to agree with him. This is the good old times. Well, folks, I'm going to take a little break and uh, be back with you in a little bit. <laughs> 